I was anticipating that might happen, that um, you would hear a number of sermons before it was time for me to give mine. And uh, that's okay. That's good. So I'm going to abbreviate a little bit of what I was going to do this morning so that we can move toward the Lord's table, but not without um, a couple minutes. I'll try to be good. In Philippians chapter 3. Maybe you take a piece of paper out, or in the edge of your Bible, why don't you write two things? Uh, number one, I would love for you to write just cryptically for yourself, between you and the Lord, what do you want to forget about 2022 or the past? In Philippians chapter 3, verse 7, the Apostle Paul says, But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For His sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them but rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. This was Paul telling his own biography. It, this section is like a commencement speech to end all commencement speeches. Looking back, realizing the present, and looking forward. And when Paul looked back on his life, he looked at the things that he thought at one point were gain, but he came to terms with his futile past. And he said, actually, the things that I used to think were the real wins in my life were the losses. What I thought was a gain was actually a negative in the ledger. And for him, in the context, it was his own religious activity, all of his accomplishments and every spiritual tradition that he practiced as a Pharisee of all Pharisees, because it was rooted in his own self-effort before God, all of his achievements prior to coming to Christ were simply his own mechanism to elevate himself in God's eyes. And what he came to realize was all my self-efforts were a loss. And I wonder if at the start of 2023, we would say, what are the things in my last season of life did I really think were going to be the wins that ended up being losses? And what were the things that I thought were going to be terrible that actually ended up being good for me? Have you ever had that experience where you thought something was going to be terrible only until the Lord worked it through in your life and realized you needed that in order to get something far greater? That's often the way God works. Sometimes it's the way He works in cancer. Sometimes it's the way He works in unemployment, in relational trouble. Sometimes Hard relationships lead to the acknowledgement that I need something greater than this relationship in my life to be my greatest anchor. So if you think about what you're going to write on your little piece of paper this morning, what in the past would you like to say, I'm, I'm going to leave that behind? He goes on in verse 9, I, I forget those things in order that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes through the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness of God that depends on faith. That depends on faith. See, all of his prior accomplishments were rooted in his self-effort, and Christianity is distinct from all other world religions that are rooted on our ability to make ourselves approved to God. But Christianity is the acknowledgement that we are not approved of God, and He loves us by His grace, and we have to trust Him apart from anything else of our own doing. Did I say that again? There is no human effort 
that makes God love us more. He loved us all the way to the cross while we were yet sinners. If that's where you are today, I just want you to hear Paul say, everything I tried to do in the past was a loss. What I do now, I want to gain Christ. I want to be found in Him. Verse 10, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and may share in His... Next word. You with me? That I may share in His sufferings and become like Him in His death that by any means possible I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. I think anybody who studies the Bible understands that what Paul is saying, I would be willing to lose everything in my past if I had Christ today and I want to walk in Him in such a way that even if it goes through suffering, I want Him more than anything else. Not all people can say this. It is at the point of suffering that many people walk away from Jesus. But Paul was a transformed man who was willing to suffer the loss of everything to gain Christ, even if it meant going through these sufferings. Verse 12. That's the past. What about the present? I haven't already obtained this. Or am I perfect? Everybody said, yeah, we're not there yet. Now, sometimes we think we're pretty good. But we realize that we are all broken sinners and the old comes back more than we want to acknowledge. And Paul simply said, I am not there yet, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has everybody made me his own. The reason I'm a Christian is not because I'm holding on to Jesus but he's holding on to me. The reason I feel secure in my salvation is because he saved me, not that I'm keeping myself saved. And if you had a bad 2022 and you wandered away from Jesus, what an awesome day 2023 would be to say, okay, I'm going to forget the past, I'm going to see Christ, and I'm going to press on with him and hold on to him because I know he's holding on to me. I love that phrase. Brothers, I don't consider that I have made it my own. I'm not there yet. Verse 13 and 14. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Maybe the other thing that you write on your little piece of paper, what I want to forget of the past, and what I want to commit to in 2023 would be right here. I press on. I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That's a lot of Pauline words. What does it mean? What is the prize that we're pressing on to? What is the goal of the Christian life? In every circumstance that we will go through, what is the goal of your life? It isn't first financial security. What is God's goal and purpose for your life? It is to be like Jesus. And that is going to happen. It's going to happen ultimately when I see him. And Paul was a great Christian man of faith and wisdom and, and teaching, but he said, I'm not there yet. And he knew he wasn't going to be there until he stepped into the presence of God and saw him face to face, but it wasn't yet. And it's not for any of us yet either, but we press on and we lean into it. And uh, verse 15 says this, this is a good verse for long-time Christians. Let those of us who are mature think this way. And if anyone think otherwise, God will reveal it to you. Verse 16 is important. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. I think what Paul is saying is, I'm on a journey. I'm not there yet. I know where I'm going. The upward call of God is the prize of being with Jesus forever. And 
what I don't want to have happen is to lose what I've already attained. We would call this, I don't want to back slide. I don't want to lose what commitments I've already made. This would be a good reflection question. Has there been anything in 2022 that you sort of eased up during COVID uh, flexibility that you stopped doing what you used to do? And is there any slide away from the Lord? Paul said, don't, don't move off. Don't regress from your spiritual life. And then he illustrates in the next verses what happens. He says, brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. They glory in their shame and they have their mindset on earthly things. What's he saying? There are some who have slipped back and that's, that's their outcome. You be careful. Could I just say pastorally, Calvary Bible Church, let's not slip in 2023. Let's press on and move to greater spiritual maturity. There's more that God wants for us in spiritual growth and maturity, and there are lots of people around us who are the models of what not to do in life. They are people who used to walk with us, and they've fallen away, and they're, they're outside. Not so with you. Our pressing on is to the upward call of God in Christ Jesus to be like him, and the next verse tells us clearly what that is. Four, let's read this together. But our citizenship is in heaven. From it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like His glorious body by the power that enables Him even to subject all things to Himself. Our citizenship is in heaven. That's where we're going. And when we see Him, He's going to transform us. He's going to transform us. These lowly bodies that get cancer, these lowly bodies that die, these lowly bodies that get decrepit. He's going to change that, and we're going to be like Him and see Him and be with Him forever. That's the goal. Well, that's going to happen if you're, you're holding on to Him and He's holding on to you. And so the last verse is chapter 4, verse 1, which says, Therefore, my beloved brothers... I love and long for my joy and my crown. Stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. What if 2023 was the year more than any other year you were standing firm in Jesus? And I'm not slipping back, and I'm pressing on, and I'm forgetting the past, and it's all because of Jesus. Can we do that together? Here's how I'd summarize one way to look at all of these verses together in four simple things. Number one, forget. Number two, press on. Number three, stand firm. Number four, wait. Wait for a Savior from heaven. That's where we're going. All made possible because He gave Himself for us. So we're going to take communion this morning, which is a, a beautiful celebration of the church remembering Jesus most of all that He died for us, that He forgives us, that He calls us into new life, and that when we eat, it is a special grace to the church to say, the most important thing about me is Jesus is my Savior. There is a warning before you eat this bread and drink this cup, and it is that you examine your heart and eat in a way that's worthy of the Lord Jesus who forgives you of your sins. I take that to mean that we should all, before we eat, Say, Lord, is there anything in my life that you want to do business with? Am I right with you? Am I hiding anything? Do I have secrets that I'm trying to keep from you even though I know I can't? Lord, I want to be right. I confess my sins, and I thank you that you're my Savior. And maybe we should all just pray, Lord, help us press on in 2023. I want you to bow your heads. If you're helping to serve, why don't you come? And after a moment of silent prayer, we're going to distribute the elements to you. We'll all get the bread, and then we'll eat together, and then we'll all get the cup, and then we'll drink together. Let's pray silently.
Father, thank you that your grace is new every morning, which means you give new starts every day. And in a new year, we just want to begin it with the worshipful experience of declaring to you, proclaiming your death for us until you come again. And I pray that you'll help us release our past to you, whatever it is that's been a hurdle. Lord, we just want to lay it down before you today and hold on to the sufficient work of Jesus Christ on the cross. As each of us pray quietly now in these next moments, may the Holy Spirit of God come upon us. You just do in our hearts what we need to hear you say. And I pray you will hear all of us say, yes, Lord, we want to press on and hold on to the one who holds on to us, Lord Jesus Christ. We want to eat and drink to the glory of God today. Thank you for your broken body, which is for us. In Jesus' name, amen.